think about what a thesis is, it's basically an argument. Have a look at this dictionary definition. Point number two is probably the one that first springs to mind. It's a long essay or dissertation based on your research. But it's important to see the connection to point number one. A thesis is a statement or theory that is put forward as a premise to be maintained or proven. So there's this idea that your whole thesis is an argument. It's a way of developing a position that you convince your reader is one worth taking. So it's worth thinking about what is your thesis. Can you in one sentence make a thesis statement? The overarching argument, the big point that you are trying to use your entire thesis to convince your reader of. It might be your key finding. It's your main contribution at the boundaries of the field. Now don't panic because it's something that's built over time. It's something that you're constantly tweaking. And indeed, early in your research journey, you don't want to have your thesis statement completely sewn up and tied down because it's something that you should be willing to constantly revise as you make sense of the literature and the data that you're working with. But at some point, you want to be able to say in just a single sentence what it is that constitutes the main argument, the main contribution of your thesis. I'm going to take you through a few steps of the development of the thesis statement for my own PhD. To begin with, my thesis statement was fairly broad. It was just a key idea that I was exploring through reading the literature. Students have to write in certain ways to succeed, and this is not about grammar and punctuation. But as I read my way into the literature, it became a bit more nuanced. I was now able to say, students have to write in certain ways to succeed, and this is not about grammar and punctuation, but about the history, norms, and values of the discipline. So I was starting to grapple with some new ideas that were helping me to clarify what my thesis statement was. Then I went a step further. Students have to take on disciplinary literacy practices to succeed, but these are rarely made explicit in the curriculum. You can see with the terminology literacy practices that I really am beginning to acquire a sense of membership in the field in which my study takes place. The next version went like this. Students are expected to take on disciplinary literacy practices, but they are rarely made overt in the curriculum, which makes them difficult to access. I was now starting to think of the implications of my main argument for students' access to knowledge. The final version of my thesis statement went something like this. Students are expected to take on disciplinary literacy practices, but they are rarely made overt in the curriculum, which makes them difficult to access and renders them hidden from critique. So in order to make this big argument, I've got to spend a number of pages and chapters building up the smaller arguments that constitute this bigger argument. Let me, go, let me quickly go through what this actually looks like. So there you have my overarching thesis statement as I finally had it. Students are expected to take on the disciplinary literacy practices, but they are really made overt in the curriculum, which makes them difficult to access and renders them hidden from critique. But I first had to make an argument in something like this. Writing in the academy is about taking on literacy practices, not just about spelling, grammar, punctuation, etc., Literacy practices are complex and social. They are imbued with norms and values. I had to begin by convincing my reader that this is what writing is about in the academy. The next argument I had to make was that these literacy practices are disciplinary. So I had to build the argument that disciplines have different literacy practices. The practices of physics look different from those of philosophy and different from those of politics. The long history, norms and values of disciplines lead to very different kinds of knowledge 
and therefore very different literacies. I also had to make the argument that these disciplinary literacy practices are often not made explicit in the curriculum. We usually teach as if students need to get the content and have the language skills. We don't make it clear what the literacy practices of the discipline are or where they come from. Having made that argument, I then had to make the argument that this makes them difficult to access. Because we don't make them overt, there's a privileging of those whose social class, schooling and other factors make it more likely that they can figure out the required literacy practices. And finally, I had to make the argument that this renders them hidden from critique. Keeping literacy practices opaque doesn't only deny access to many, it makes the practices seem common sense and normalised and therefore beyond critique, challenge and change. In this way, I think you can see how I had to build a number of smaller arguments throughout the thesis based on the peer-reviewed literature and the findings from my data to convince the reader to take on my overarching thesis statement. Okay, so why don't you give it a go now? See if you can write in a single sentence your overarching contribution, your thesis statement, and then see if you can unpack it into the sub-arguments that you're going to have to make along the way.